So my portion that I'll be speaking about is uh, the adjustment brush and the graduated filter. I often call it the gradient tool, but it, I guess in, in uh, camera nomenclature, it's better to be the, the, the graduated filter. Um, when light, I've been a Lightroom user since it first came out. I love it. I used Camera Raw before. I, I loved all the features that were in Bridge, and then I realized very quickly um, that Lightroom let me do all the same thing, but just a whole lot faster. Um, but that was great, but when we got into having the adjustment brush, then Lightroom really became a creative tool for me. It started to do things that I wasn't doing before in Bridge uh, in, in terms of actual creativity and, and quite honestly fixing a lot of my problems because I've been doing uh, photography since 2004 more seriously and, and learning along the way, but I feel like I'm still just in that very beginning stages in many of the things that I do. So. Um, I have to give the disclaimer at the beginning, the pictures that I'm showing you here, I've actually picked them because they're, they're imperfect in the way that they were shot. And many times I'm going back and fixing things, yet I'm also trying to be a little creative in how I do it. So <clears throat> let me just bring up first uh, just one of these photos and we'll see the adjustment brush and the graduated filter. So quick keys K and M. Uh, learn those again as they've said quick keys are your friend you can bounce around and get to things and and make your decisions so much faster um, we'll start with the adjustment brush they're very similar um, with Lightroom 4 they added more things that were on the brush which was awesome I love that they now have uh, uh, your white balance particularly but that they have uh, several of those other things on there um, I do want to point out too real quickly that if you have brought in old fo old photos and your adjustment brush looks different. If you go down to your camera calibration and you're on one of the older versions, it will actually change the adjustment brush to be as it was at the time that you edited that photo. So if you ever see that and you're like, where did my white balance go? Well, just change that uh, to the most current camera calibration and you'll, get, you'll see the latest version. Um, so just real quickly in the basics, you see that white balance is here. Um, it used to be that you would have to select a photo or a, a a color swatch in order to apply a color to it but now you can actually change the temperature and the tint independently which is wonderful and we'll show some examples of that and all of these uh, exposure contrast highlights shadows blacks etc are all on there in clarity and some of these I think are more creative tools and some are more corrective but obviously it's just up to your personal and, and how you use them um, even further down within that tool um, you'll see in your side <clears throat> your sizing uh, and your feather and your flow and your density. I don't know how many of you use those frequently to change how hard it's applied. I'll admit right off that most of the time I'm just 100% everything on there, right? And that's okay. I think that works in a lot of cases, but you'll find that as you explore a little bit, particularly you know how feathered that ed edge is and, and how much flow that you put on there, it can really change how useful that is as a tool. Now one thing to think about as well, I, I'm, I can't draw to save my life. That's why photography is such a wonderful outlet for me, uh, because I can be creative without being able to draw. But yet I have taken to really enjoying having a tablet, and particularly when it comes to the adjustment brush, being able to brush in really fine tune, and it's responsive to how strong you hit it as well, or you can set it up to be that way. Um, so that's one thing I would suggest too, that uh, you can do it with a mouse, and that's great. I'm, I'm very familiar with the mouse, but uh, when you get into using that, that uh, pen tool, it can be very, uh, just natural in the way that you do it. So what I want to do is kind of show a few ways um, that I've used them on photos. This is a photo I took on Utah Lake uh, when it was frozen. It was actually about 100 yards out on the ice, which was kind of exhilarating with the camera. Um, but I wanted to show, um, and if you've ever uh, taken your photos after you've shown them off and go back to what they were at the beginning, sometimes it's, uh, it's eye-opening. That, that's how it was exposed. And I don't typically do HDR, so I don't have anything against it, I just probably don't want to take the time to shoot all those frames and put it all together. And so oftentimes though I like to take a RAW and bring out what's good in it. And you can see just with, the, with a applying two graduated filters that this photo very quickly became something that was what I was actually seeing. You know, this, this was a dynamic view and I wanted to bring out a lot more that was in the sky. So I just want to show a little bit of what I did there. Um, you know, the sky, I wanted obviously to bring it way down. So I brought the exposure way extreme down. And this was actually shot in 2010. Um, so you'll see that it was using one of these color swatches instead of using the, uh, the white balance tool. So I applied some blue into that sky. Now the same thing, I could have done that now with white balance and brought out more of the sky, made it more orange, made it more blue. And, and again, I, 
create uh, with create the, the creative view of what I was seeing. I was really trying to just get to what I experienced. Um, one of the difficulties I had too was that the the ice itself, when I was exposing for the sky, became black. So I kind of shot it in mind, knowing that I'm going to have to split this. I didn't have a physical filter with me, which would have been ideal to get it right in camera. But I shot it in the middle, so I didn't lose losing the exposure. So I still had detail in my ice and I still had detail in my sky and I was able to just apply two quick graduated filters and get it to where I want it to be. Now with that filter there's lots more that you could do. Let's say you want a detail in your sky but you didn't want to uh, you want to bring out detail in the sky but you didn't want to do too much more to the ice. You can selectively apply clarity. So you could try to make that a real angry sky with you know too much clarity but you're not touching anything there. The, the beauty of a graduated filter is that it is graduated. So I could bring that up here stretch out my filter even more and get that kind of graduated feel across the sky. So as you see that the span, I hear I'm pointing at my screen, I don't remember. Um, you see that the, the, the size of your graduated filter it determines how much of a transition there is in whatever you're applying. So everything that's behind the first line, the one that's on top here, is 100%. So whatever you're applying from that point up is 100%. And then through that span is the transition in which what you're applying becomes less and less applied. And then, of course, everything <laughs> past the bottom one is not touched at all. There's lots of reasons why that becomes really useful. And so that's different in some ways than in how you might do the adjustment brush. So like, let's say if I were to take that off and I wanted to go at this with an adjustment brush, say I'm just bringing the exposure down and I'm doing, you know, you can scroll your wheel and make it nice and big and it's feathered there. So I can apply this into the sky and you're going to get a transition but you're going to not have just necessarily that natural feel of what would be taking place in, the, in the, the gradient of what is happening in the sky. So you can kind of approach it in two different ways. One thing I like to point out is um, some of the quick keys here. O is your overlay. A lot of times when people are applying brushes, they like to like go to extremes so that they know where they're brushing. But uh, that's kind of really redundant. You don't have to do it that way because you can just hit the O key and you can see how it's, it's giving you that feathered area. It's letting you see um, where you've brushed that on. So, oh, I like to toggle that back and forth with overlay. So if we bring that back, I can, you know, the adjustment brush can get is good in certain circumstances, but I really feel like in the landscape when you're trying to do a, a broad area, your, your graduated filter is much more applicable. Um, I'm already off my notes, but I knew that would happen. Um, I like to use the adjustment brush a lot of times to correct situations that I was unable to correct at the time. So I like, uh, you know, I, I shot for um, Ignite Salt Lake numerous times, and this was one of those situations where you, you walk in and you figure out on the fly, this is what my lighting's going to be. So they had a nice back projected image at one white balance, and then they had a whole different white balance on their spotlight. I was happy they had a spotlight that time because they didn't before, but it was like 2,000 degrees Kelvin different. And so what I did is, um, if you click on this and we either hover or you hit your overlay, um, I was able first to bring in and get my exposure um, brought up a little bit where it had darkened off. Um, and then also I was able to brush into the whole area that was the screen, turn that back on, and give it a white balance in order to bring it more in tune with what the white balance of the overall scene should be. Now this particular one, it, you know, it, I didn't have a lot of, of extra scene around it, so it made it rather easy to, to brush in and find my different places. So I was able to set my white balance and my exposure very uh, specifically and correct this image into what it should have been, you know, had, had the white balance been tuned in between the two light sources. Um, this is an extreme example, but you know you can find that uh, if you're shooting in um, uh, using natural light and there was bouncing light, you're near a tree and there was a lot of green on someone's skin tone, you could brush in and bring back some of what should be corrected there. Um, so again, if I were to show you, uh, I won't worry about it, show you what it was when it began, it's totally different. This is where I liked, uh, an example of where I like to use the, the brush creatively. Um, when I shot this, I, I had this in mind. This is what I had kind of pre-visualized. It's a combination of a strobe stopping her at one point, and it's a long exposure to get the fire. She's actually spinning a hula hoop with fire on it to get that uh, movement. Um, but the original image wasn't nearly as dynamic, and, and I hate to show this sometimes, that it wasn't anything near what you saw. Um, in fact, let me just, we'll hit reset. And this is how it was shot. Um, so I've got white balance issues, 
um, between the strobe and the fire and then also that fire was slightly overexposed and not as rich as I wanted it to be. So if I bring it back you'll see what the final image is and we'll just kind of break it down a little bit. Um, on this particular one I painted into the fire and I brought my clarity up which brought a lot more dimension into the fire so like if I bring that back and bring that up you can see there's quite a bit more texture and, and depth to the fire which is again what I was seeing and what I wanted to see in that, that image and here um, this one particularly is brushed onto the model um, the, the, the performer and you have the opportunity where you can even bring up and, and adjust your white balance to be either more correct or more creatively where you want it to be so I love being able to make selective adjustments whether for corrections or for, for creative purposes on an image um, we'll show just kind of a few others with that in mind like this is just kind of a, a general stock shoot kind of a feel we were this guy was not a set model he just happened to be there and I said hey do you mind if I take some shots of you and, and so we were using natural light it was kind of a walkthrough situation didn't even have a reflector so I knew right off the bat when I shot this that it was going to be very flat um, I wasn't going to have um, any way of filling in those shadows and so I did my basic edits to begin with and if I take off where I threw in some adjustment brushes, I can apply to the whole image, get my exposure where I want it to be, um, but then I'm still going to have this area of his face and in his chest that just really isn't popping out the way that I want it to be. So instead of trying again to apply it to the whole image, um, I just was able to brush in uh, some of the effects that I wanted. So to brighten up his face, to bring that up in the front of his shirt, just giving it a little bit of an exposure pop. And one thing to keep in mind, too, is that brushes are additive. You can layer and brush on top of a brush and change parts of what you want to do. So if you want clarity over everything, or if you want uh, you know, clarity just in a little bit of a spot, you can add that on there. Or if you want to bring up a whole area exposed and then bring a little area in the middle back down, it's going to keep adding uh, to whatever you've put on there. So you're not losing any of that, that information. Don't be afraid to apply a lot of brushes. It's just metadata, right? We, we get afraid of storing too much stuff, but you have unlimited amounts of data of, of uh, brushes and things that you can put on there. Um, just another example, you can tell Jeff and I went to the same place um, at the Holy Festival, just brought out the sky, brought in a little bit more clarity and contrast where it wasn't uh, there to begin with. So if we delete that out, the sky was still fine, but I just wanted to give it a little more oomph. Um, this is another more extreme example where um, you know, jumping up on the stage, the, the speakers were able to bring out some of the uh, areas of darkness and detail and brush in some clarity into the, into the colors. Um, this is probably a more common example of something I, I use it for all the time. Um, a lot of times when I shoot families, I like to bring just one strobe to get a little bit of pop to the subject, uh, different than the ambient light that's there. But because I, maybe because I'm lazy or because of the style that I like to do, oftentimes my foreground may spill some of the light that I didn't want there. And so even when you see this, there's more light than I want it to begin with. So you can just bring in um, a quick graduated filter and just kind of darken up that background or that foreground or the background a little bit and just kind of adjust it to where you want it to be. Another uh, way to use this too is, uh, you know, when Lightroom first came out, it was like vignette on everything, right? Uh, everyone had that dark circle right into the middle and and quickly that got old well I still sometimes like to draw into the subject and so I'll often use graduated filters as kind of like a modified vignette where I can selectively apply it to different areas and still draw into the subject the way that I'd like them to be um, another example this is one where you can fix a lot of things that were wrong this is my little nephew that is a fire plug and full of energy so we were jumping around and sometimes he would jump into the light that was not where I wanted it to be so if I take it back to the original image there's a lot of blown out areas and things that I wanted to to kind of correct so by adding in brushes into some of the areas I'm able to to correct where there's blowouts without taking that away from uh, the subject itself I'm able to bring out some of the shadows and the face all selectively by using the brush in those different areas. Uh, one last example, I know I'm short on time here. Uh, sometimes it's less extreme uh, than, than others. Like this is just a little concert shot down in uh, Provo a few weeks ago. And uh, I wanted those lights to pop a little more than they did. Um, I was having exposed for the stage lights, which were obviously, obviously brighter, but we lost you know, what was kind of that yellow tungsten feel that I wanted there. So with the adjust, adjustment brush, you can use that uh, feather you know and you can have a sharp edge or a soft edge and in this case um, sometimes you might think let me switch this to a 
less extreme zoom there we go um, you might think that uh, well why don't you come in real precise and use your auto mask uh, are you familiar with the auto mask tool at all that's where it will find edges for you so if I bring that feather or the size down and that feather down and let's say I just wanted to fill in with some brightness um, a new new edge if you use that auto mask you're gonna get this really sharp edge on there and though on like a web resolution that may not matter when you're looking at back at a full size uh, what's gonna happen is that um, that edge is gonna be very sharp and defined so auto mask is useful in some cases but you have to be really careful uh, with how you apply it so in cases like this I much prefer to have a, a feathered edge and kind of overdo let me turn off that exposure kind of oversize what I want it to be and allow that edge to be more natural you have to watch out for haloing sometimes um, but what you can also do is go over a little bit and then use the subtraction and paint away the edge and get something that corrects where it went over the the edge a little bit so that's uh, kind of short version um, of what that tool can do it's really nice that you just have the ability to apply selective adjustments in different places in your image whether it's for correction or for artistic uh, choices in what you're doing um, it gives you a lot more creativity without going into pho Photoshop and rendering out that image you're still working in the metadata on top of your raw file which I think is the real value and that is it